Fathers and mothers do very different things with children. Um, the fathers are far more likely to encourage children to do things that are outside of the children's comfort zone. Um, if the child, and they're, they're far more likely to encourage risks. They're far more likely to risk uh, roughhouse. They're far more likely to, to enforce boundaries, not set boundaries. Uh, they're far more likely to play with the children. They turn everything, as a rule, many fathers turn everything into a game. Um, and the good news is that, the, that by turning things into a game, they build up a reservoir of goodwill from which they can leverage good boundary enforcement. Um, not every father does this this way, but this is oftentimes not appreciated by a mother. So for example, um, uh, a father, when the child is, let's say, in a divorce, and the, and the child is visiting during the, week, uh, the weekend, and the father says, uh, okay, go to the playground, um, be careful there. And so the father might take the child to the playground, leave the child at the playground, come home and watch an, um, an ice hockey match. Um, and then the child, let's say, gets into a fight at the playground. And the mother, and, and then on Sunday, goes home to the mother. And the mother says, how did you get into that fight? Where did, you know, what happened? Oh, I got into a fight at the playground. Well, where was dad? He was home watching the ice hockey game. I see. And so the, what does the mother conclude? Father cares more about ice hockey than my son. But because fathers don't articulate their perspective until you really ask and talk with them, you don't get from the father the perspective that if my son gets into a fight in the playground, I'd like to know about it when he comes home, talk with him about it. He's much more likely to learn a great deal by getting into a fight uh, and then avoiding a fight that he will be having me protect him from that fight to begin with. I'd rather have him get into a fight when he's young, when I'm here to protect him and guide him, than be protected from a fight until he gets older and he graduates. Now I'm looking around at the audience here, I'm seeing a lot of guys nod their head yes. I'm not seeing a single woman nod her head yes. <laughs> and so, and it's not because men are right or women are wrong or vice versa, it's because these are different values, different internal thinkings. The problem is and with guys, we haven't thought this through, we don't articulate this, so women can't hear what men don't say. And fathers don't go into psychology sections of bookstores and read about this and articulate this to their wives. So women often feel like the, they want the child primarily because, after divorce because they are the better parent. Because there isn't a good male-female dialogue about the, the checks and balances that good parenting needs. We only have outcome data that only a few people are aware of, that children with a significant amount of father involvement have much more empathy. Empathy. Now how in the world do children with a lot of father involvement get, for example, more empathy? Aren't women in general more empathetic than men? I would probably vote yes on that issue. Maybe not on every level, but in many levels. And so if that's the case, how do the child, children have more empathy the more involvement with father they have? And the reason is that empathy doesn't come from being empathized. When you're empathized with, you learn to focus on yourself. When everybody's thinking about what you need and what your feelings are and how you are hurt, you become self-centered, you become narcissistic, you become non-empathetic very frequently. Empathy often comes from, like say a father and son, a child wrestling, and the father saying, um, you can use leverage, you can fake me out with eye contact, but if you poke me in the, in the eyes or pull my hair or kick me in the groin, there'll be no more wrestling tonight. And then the child does one of those things, and the father says, okay, no more wrestling tonight. The father who enforces the boundaries of no more wrestling tonight teaches that child, daughter or, or, or son, to think about some feelings besides the child's need or desire to win as a wrestler. The child who doesn't get those boundaries enforced starts thinking, I can get, let me see how much I can get away with by po poking, pulling in order to, to win. When, when a mother and father are divorced, very typically a mom will say, um, sweetie, um, you can't have your ice cream until you finish your peas. What will the dad say? He'll say exactly the same thing. You can't have your ice cream until you finish your peas. The difference is that when mom says it, and then the child says, I've had a few more peas, can I have my ice cream now? 
Mom tends to think to herself, you know, I'm the only mom here, I'm, I'm, I have a divorce, I feel a little bit guilty, am I going to make a huge issue out of a few peas? I don't think so. It would be insensitive for me to do so. So the, the mom is more likely to say, okay, you've had a few peas, now you can have your ice cream. The dad is more likely to say what? Excuse me, we have a deal here. The deal here is you can either not have any peas and get your ice uh, and get no ice cream, or you can have all your peas like we made the deal for and get the ice cream. And the, the child, and here's the key issue here, the child with the, de the mom is learning, I can always manipulate a better deal. And if mom articulates any of her vulnerabilities, like I feel a little bit guilty after divorce, the child goes for that, that, that feeling that she or he can manipulate. So the child doesn't learn how to focus attention on what she or he needs to focus attention on. The child begins to get attention deficit disorder. So children raised primarily by moms are twice as likely to have attention deficit disorder as children raised primarily by dads. Because watch what the dad is doing. By him saying you can't have your ice cream until you finish your peas, he's making it worthwhile for the child to focus on finishing those peas, that is focus on the activity it needs to focus on in order to get the reward. What the child is being le learning from the dad is that postponed gratification pays. What the child's learning from the mom is that postponed gratification doesn't pay. I can win the ice cream without focusing for very long. I can focus on manipulation rather than on finishing the deed. Postponed gratification, I mentioned before, is the single most important um, skill set to do that. So knowing these differences are very helpful. But can women learn to do those, that boundary enforcement? They absolutely can. Is it harder for women to do that? As a rule, usually, because women have such a protector instinct and the empathy, oftentimes, in the feelings of the sensitivities of that child about the divorce or having failed in school or something else that went wrong in school are likely to be very present in the mom's psyche. So it's valuable for the father to understand that that difference is there because it increases the father's empathy for the mother and what she's struggling with and how hard a difference for the father that comes natural. Tough love comes much more natural for most dads. So it's important for moms and dads to understand their differences, but it's also important for moms and dads to realize that raising children is like running a government. You better dare if you appreciate conservatives and liberals as checks and balances, and when you have both, you run a better government with, ch with raising children when you have the father input and the mother input, and you keep both involved, and instead of saying, you're wrong, mom, you're wrong, dad, you appreciate the tension, the tension is really checks and balances. And so rather than focusing on the tension, and we're terrible, we're not, wor we're not worthy of each other, we shouldn't be with each other, we want something different, we say, I really appreciate what you bring that's different from what I bring. I see how difficult it is for you to think differently about that. Let's, let's talk that through and communicate that through and, and learn to both contribute to that. When we do that, we are bringing to our sons and our daughters a view that when parents disagree, they can resolve that rather than divorce. And I'll ask you to turn to the right. Just take, turn to the right, face this wall here. And to reach out your arms and um, put them on the shoulders of the person in front of you. And give her or him, that's it, move across the aisles. There we go. In the United States, we're trying to move across the aisles. So you can do it here in Canada as well. <laughs> when, you, when you bring somebody in from California, this is what happens. <laughs> Reach out and um, massage the shoulders of the person in front of you. The person whose shoulders are being massaged, tell the person behind you. Oh, this is really nice. Forget about this lecture. <laughs> talking to you first of all but basically we're here to shut down an event that is promoting the patriarchy very frustrated I was studying all today and I took time out of my studies to come here I'd like to ask him why he's here 
I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sufficiently convinced that I'll receive an answer that isn't what I presented. Two of my friends committed suicide and I want the peace of understanding why that happened. Wow. When, when did this happen? It happened about two years ago. It was one after the other like that. Did you expect to get some addressing of suicide issue at the talk here? Yes, I did. What I have to ask on that, and I'll ask you, is why this space to talk about that? There, like Feminism, for example, offers lots of spaces to talk about mental health issues, talk about depression, both in men, women, and people who don't identify within the binary. I think everybody's voice should be uh, heard. Fucking scum.